Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, please consider subscribing. I post weekly about military and finance topics. In today's video, we're going to talk about credit scores, specifically how is it calculated and why it's important for you to monitor your credit score. Now, your credit score ranges between 0 and 850. Anything above 720 is excellent, and anything above 750 usually qualifies you for the best rates. You will have a credit score of zero if you've never had any debt, if you've never had a credit card or a loan or anything has ever been reported to one of the, the three credit bureaus. Why do you care? Well, one, nobody teaches you this. So when you go and get an auto loan or a student loan, I feel like a loan officer should have to take five minutes to explain to you what your credit score is and why it's important. I mean, is watching somebody on YouTube really the best way to learn about this? Because for me, prior to maybe a year ago, I never looked at my credit score. I didn't think about my credit score. I just said, you know, pay all my bills on time and I should be good, right? Well, your credit score is your loan and bill payment history. And it gives creditors basically the likelihood of, if you will, repay your debts to them. And your score will determine loan eligibility and interest rates. This affects your mortgage rates. It can affect whether or not you'll be able to rent an apartment. It'll affect your premiums on car insurance, your credit card eligibility, which cards you're allowed to get and what the APR interest rate on those cards will be. It also sometimes affects your ability to obtain employment. When I applied to be an officer in the Air Force, they did run a credit check, credit check on me and they, they do care about that whether or not you're in any kind of financial problems or you pay your bill on time. Bottom line, your credit score uh, will affect how much money you pay and how much money you earn back. And we'll do an example here. Let's pretend you wanna buy a house and you're gonna get a 30 year fixed rate mortgage for $300,000 and you have 20% down payment, but your credit score is not that good and the bank is gonna tell you, we're gonna give you a 5% interest rate. When you uh, plug these numbers into a mortgage calculator, they will spit back that you'll have to pay about 240,000 towards the principal you owe over 30 years, but then 223,000 in interest. The interest payments over 30 years is almost the same as the principal that you're paying down. But what if you had a really good credit score and the bank was willing to give you a 4% interest rate? Then you're paying $240,000 towards the principal over 30 years and only $172,000 in interest. That's a difference of $51,000. So think about that, that slight change in percentages and apply that to your credit card APR, your car premiums, uh, you know, uh, any, any kind of student loans or other kind of loans that you might get, maybe a small business loan. So your credit score really does make things add up over, over a lifetime. Now, who determines your credit score? There's actually three credit agencies that track all of your history, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experion. They're three separate scores, but they're, they're usually pretty consistent and similar. Their exact formulas are kept secret because they don't want people knowing and then gaming the system. So it's three slightly different scores. And when you try and like, for example, get a credit card from Chase, Chase is only going to request one of these agencies to give them their version of your credit score. Now, by law, you're allowed to request your credit score from each of these three agencies. They have to be able to give you one free credit report per year. And their formulas are updated regularly. So your credit score and how they determine it is actually changing year to year, but uh, the categories stay the same and we'll cover that in a second. Now, these three agencies do collaborate and they do produce something called a Vantage score. I highly recommend you get an account with Credit Karma. It's 100% it's free to sign up. I just signed up actually two weeks ago and it took about five minutes and then I was logged in and I was seeing what my Vantage score is, which is basically an agreed upon score of those three agencies. Credit Karma is free. Once again, I highly recommend it to track your credit score. These are the uh, five categories. 
The first category is payment history, about 35%. They're calculating, do you have any late payments? How late were those payments? And what was the total value of those late payments? Those are the factors that go into this category. If you just make every single payment on time, whatever the minimum amount is, over a seven to 10 year period, you'll max out this category. Amounts owed on all of your lines of credit. There's something called the debt to credit ratio here. And let's pretend you had a uh, credit limit on a credit card of $1,000. If you are carrying over a balance on that card of like $800, then your debt to credit ratio is 80%. And to the credit card uh, agency, the credit agencies, that is a bad ratio. And anything above 50% will negatively impact your score. And you're gonna wanna try and stay under 30%. So if you had a uh, credit limit of $10,000 between all of your credit cards, and you had a balance under 3,000, then that's good. But once again, just zero everything out and you should be good. As far as other forms of debt, just pay it down, do your best, you know, having a mortgage or an auto loan, don't, don't worry about how it affects this category. Length of credit history is 15%. This is easily determined just whatever the average length of your active credit counts are. So let's say you have a credit card, you only had one, and it's 10 years old. 10 is usually the max for reporting and you decided to open up a second credit card, that second credit card is now at zero years. You'd average those two, it would give you an average of five. Uh, so whatever your oldest accounts are, credit cards anyways, don't cancel those, and then just be careful how many new uh, lines of credit you open because it will lower your average. Frequency of new credit is 10%. If you were to open a bunch of new lines of credit in a short amount of time, to creditors that looks suspicious. They're thinking you're maybe doing cash advances and going to casinos or you're in some kind of trouble and you're trying to stay afloat by just borrowing as much as you can and you might potentially go bankrupt at some point. Hard inquiries, so when you request new lines of credit, this does lower your score by three to five points, but that only remains on your credit score for about six months. So anytime you open a new line of credit, It'll hurt your score for about six months, but then it'll recover. People checking your score is also bad. So when you apply for a mortgage or an auto loan, or you want to uh, maybe apply for a job and, and a hard check is done on your score, that will negatively impact it for a short amount of time. The last category is diversity of credit, 10%. And having a diversity of credit is good. And this can be made up of credit cards, mortgage, auto loans, student loans. Unfortunately for me, I don't have a mortgage, I don't have an auto loan, and I don't have any student loans. Uh, so the only way I can acquire debt and improve my score is with credit cards, which is why I, I'll probably be making another video soon about how many credit cards I have now. I wanna quickly mention some FICO score myths. And number one is leaving a small balance on a credit card will improve your score. Or potentially delaying paying off an auto loan or a student loan so that you keep making payments will improve your score. This is a myth. Uh, to improve your credit, credit score, you should never have any debt and you should never pay any interest. It'd be unfair for the system to say you have to pay people money in order to get a good score. So. They don't, they don't factor that into the formula. Paying off your bills as quickly as you can is good. Paying them off in full is good. And you'll never, you'll never have to uh, pay interest or lose money in order to improve your score. Number two is too many credit lines will lower your score. This is counterintuitive because, I mean, for me, just thinking, yeah, somebody with 10 plus credit cards must have a problem, but actually having more credit lines and then showing that you're responsible with all of them, paying them off in full, paying them on time, that actually improves your score. They, they show that you're responsible. Now, there is some truth to this. 30 years ago in the 80s, they did uh, negatively impact your score if you had too many lines of credit, but they did a study and they basically concluded that people who are responsible with money, doesn't matter how much money you give them, they're still responsible. 
And as far as people who are not responsible, they're not going to get the loans. They're not going to get new cards. They're going to be stopped before it becomes a problem, ideally. The third one is you should cut up old credit cards you don't use. I made this mistake. I had a card that I got in college from a, a regional bank, and I had this card for over 10 years, never missed a payment. Then when I joined the military, I got a new credit card with USAA, and I said, hey, this is dangerous to keep this old card going. I should just cut it up and then cancel it, which is exactly what I did. That was a huge uh, no-no, and it negatively impacted my score, so... Now I know, now you know, don't do that. To keep old lines of credit open, uh, you need to just use that card once, go to the gas station, spend $20 once every six months to keep that line of credit uh, on your history and open. Credit cards will cancel your cards or opt not to renew you if you go longer than a year or maybe a couple years without using it. They'll just say this person's not, not generating any income for us, so we're gonna cancel the card and then um, do business with someone else. So yeah, in conclusion, credit cards are actually excellent financial tools, especially if you have no other kinds of credit. And just in general, with all of your debt and your payments, be responsible, but also, you know, it's kind of a game and you have to play because over a lifetime, it has a huge financial impact for you and your family. And these are things that you have to know and things that you have to uh, pay close attention to. But ultimately, yeah, just be responsible. Okay, guys, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm will recommend it to other people. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel. Once again, I post weekly about military and finance topics. And if you have any questions or potentially I missed something, leave a comment down below. I will read it and get back to you. And until the next video, take care.